Welcome friends to this uh, new topic of uh, uh, the week 7 lectures and uh, today we will be starting about we will be starting soil nitrogen, we will discuss about different processes of soil nitrogen. So, uh, let us start and uh, let me show you what are the different concepts we will be covering in this lecture. First of all, we will see the importance of nitrogen, then we will see different forms of nitrogen and then uh, we will see the nitrogen cycle and different processes which are involved in the nitrogen cycle and finally, we will see the fate of nitrogen in soil. So, uh, let us start uh, with the nitrogen importance. So, why the nitrogen management is important? Now, you know that nitrogen is an integral part of amino acids and chloroplast and nucleic acids. So, it is an integral part of uh, you know uh, of you know it is a, of protein which is a building block of uh, any biological organisms and it hugely impacts the world ecosystem obviously. So, imbalance of nitrogen cycle basically leads to the global warming and ozone depletion because of the formation of nitrous oxide and we will discuss why nitrous oxide forms basically nitrous oxide forms due to the process of denitrification we will see that process later on. So, remember that nitrogen is very very important uh, because uh, you know the nitro without nitrogen the you know the plant body cannot be uh, constituted. So, so influence of nitrogen of plant growth you can uh, you know uh, see uh, de de you know <coughs> based on the uh, abundance of nitrogen in the plant, we can divide their status as nitrogen deficiency, optimal nitrogen and excess of nitrogen. So, obviously, in case of nitrogen deficiency, you will see chlorosis condition that is uh, in case of older lower leaves, they are turned you know pale, they are turned yellow in color. So, we call it chlorosis. And uh, we have seen the uh, you know the chlorosis in our previous lecture, and also it will show the stunted growth, and it will give the less protein and more sugar, mature quickly than healthy plants, and finally it will give the premature senescence, which is the aging of the plant. And uh, so these are the deficiency symptoms of nitrogen for plant body. However, in case of optimal nitrogen, you will see that there are dim green leaves and increased vegetative growth and you know there are more protein content and finally, you will see that more grain yield. So, these basically uh, indicates the optimal nitrogen content and excess of nitrogen that is also harmful. So, when the deficiency is also harmful and excess of any a particular element is also harmful. So, when there is an excess of nitrogen, you will see some deleterious effect on the plant health that is excessive vegetative growth and you will see weak plants and subsequent lodging of the plants, delayed maturity than healthier plants and harmful build up of excess nitrogen in tissues. So, these are the different effects based on the nitrogen content in the plant. So, Let us see some pictures of, uh, let us see some photos. So, you can see that chlorosis of older leaves in corn. So, obviously, the nitrogen deficiency will be seen in the lower leaves and it will turn yellow. So, we call it chlorosis of leaves and you will also see the stunted growth. And uh, in case of excess nitrogen, obviously, there will be excessive vegetative growth and weak plants as a result when there is a, you know, uh, when there is a wind blow or any you know automatically the plants will lodge and the, you can see here lodging of the paddy due to excessive vegetative growth. So, this is also harmful for the growth of the plant. So, we can see the two extreme condition when uh, in one case there is nitrogen deficiency in another case there is excessive uh, nitrogen. So, uh, what are the different forms of nitrogen? Obviously, you can see there are two major forms of nitrogen plant can uptake. One is ammonium, another is nitrate. So, these are inorganic forms. So, available forms are basically ammonium and nitrate. And ammonium uptake lowers the rhizosphere pH. I already told you in my week 6 lectures that whenever plant will uptake ammonium and uh, they will release the, they will release the uh, 
protons to balance these uh, nutrient imbalance to balance this uh, transfer of the nutrients, uh, transfer of the ions and as a result there will be lowering of the pH because uptake of ammonium again will release the H plus and this H plus is required for soil acidity. So, the soil acidity will increase when there will be ammonium uptake uh, in the rhizosphere region. However, uh, the similar device you know the opposite effect is found in case of uh, nitrate. So, obviously, uh, when there is a nitrate uh, removal or the, when there is a nitrate uptake obviously, uh, you will see so the opposite effect. So, there will be uh, there, there will not be any reduction of pH. So, dissolved organic compounds also supply in, uh, you know nitrogen in organic forms and among these various form uptake depends on their availability and the crop. We will see that later on. So, let us see what are the different organic nitrogen pool. So, if you see there is a total organic nitrogen, total organic nitrogen has two different other pools also. One is called the S O N, another is called the D O N. The S O N basically denotes the soluble organic nitrogen and D O N basically denotes uh, the dissolved ox, you know, organic nitrogen. So, the soluble organic nitrogen basically portion of organic nitrogen which are can be easily extracted using salt solution like K C L or water. And the DON is basically the portion of soluble organic nitrogen present in salt solution and drainage waters. And reasons that basically this DON is the reason for inherent fertility of some forest and uh, basically they are easily leached. So, there is a potential threat for environmental uh, you know environmental contamination especially in downstream areas. So, you can see these two nitrogen organic pools. However, again remember for plant the essential forms are ammonium and nitrate. So, what are the different uh, you know uh, you know in uh, if, we, if we consider the terrestrial ecosystem and marine ecosystem what are the different pathways of nitrogen transfer. You can see some anthropogenic courses are you know anthropogenic causes are given here and anthropogenic causes for nitrogen you know nitrogen addition are industrial nitrogen fixation obviously and then uh, agriculture nitrogen fixation and then forest fuel burning. So, all these are anthropogenic causes and also there is a natural nitrogen fixation. So, all these are inputs of nitrogen. However, nitrogen in the atmosphere basically goes in the form when the denitrification takes place. So, denitrification is basically conversion of nitrate into gaseous nitrogen by different uh, microorganism uh, specifically in the anaerobic condition, we will discuss that in detail. So, denitrification basically converts the inorganic form of nitrogen ultimately to the gaseous nitrogen. So, this gaseous nitrogen ultimately release into the atmosphere. So, this is called the denitrification process and also there is a marine denitrification and marine nitrogen fixation. So, all these processes are occurred uh, you know in all these processes occurred in uh, terrestrial ecosystem uh, basically soil ecosystem as well as marine ecosystem. So, this is very important to learn these dynamics while you uh, you know study the soil nitrogen cycle. So, this is the soil nitrogen cycle or nitrogen cycle in nutshell. So, uh, please uh, understand it very very carefully and uh, you can see here first let us start with the plant. So, when the plant dies their bodies or plant residues will basically decompose and they will go towards this organic nitrogen. As a result of decomposition all the organic nitrogen which is present in the plant body will be released and these organic nitrogen will ultimately immobilization in the form of you know they, they, they will basically mineralize to form uh, mineral, mineral forms of nitrogen. So, the first mineral forms of nitrogen from organic nitrogen is ammonium and this ammonium will further uh, you know nit you know in the process of nitrification 
in the process of nitrification it will convert into nitrate and the opposite process of conversion of this mineral ammonium to the organic form of nitrogen is called immobilization. So, again first of all the plant when the plant dies their plant residues as a result of decomposition organic nitrogen will generate and this organic form of nitrogen will further uh, uh, you know uh, <coughs> convert into the ammonium form we call it mineralization and this conversion of organic form to inorganic form is called mineralization and this ammonium form will further uh, convert into nitrate form in the process of nitrification and the opposite of uh, conversion of ammonium the, the opposite opposite process that is conversion of ammonium to organic form is called the immobilization. Now, this nitrate nitrogen is highly mobile with water. So, highly soluble. So, when it is highly soluble it is uh, it is also there is also chance of uh, losing this nitrate by the leaching process and leaching is basically downward movement of uh, you know water dissolved dissolving different salts. So, this nitrate will dissolve easily in the in the in the water and it will leach down and further in the anaerobic condition these nitrate will convert into atmospheric nitrogen you can see here uh, it is converting into the atmospheric nitrogen here to the process of denitrification and this denitrification occurs in anaerobic condition. Also this nitrate can uh, you know remove from one place to another place in the through the process of runoff and erosion. Now, uh, this atmospheric nitrogen this atmospheric nitrogen uh, you know we can use that for industrial fixation in the case of different producing different commercial fertilizer. So, when we produce different commercial fertilizer we add you know one of the major ingredient is uh, nitrogen gas and this nitrogen gas is basically coming from atmospheric nitrogen. So, it is a form one is it is a way of industrial nitrogen fixation and ultimately these commercial fertilizer will ultimately goes to this ammonium pool because it will uh, it will react with the soil and ultimately goes to the ammonium pool. Remember that from this ammonium pool and nitrate pool these two will go to for plant uptake because plant only can take these two uh, forms of nitros, nitrogen. Another important aspect is uh, in the you know sometime this ammonium also uh, released into the atmosphere through the volatilization process. So, this ammonium ion will convert to gaseous ammonia and this gaseous ammonia will go to the uh, to the atmosphere and finally, it will reach the atmospheric nitrogen. So, this is called the uh, volatilization process or ammonium volatilization process. When the crop is getting removed and after the harvesting this is another way of loss. So, basically and uh, uh, so, I have covered all of them. So, uh, you know some of them are here. So, atmospheric nitrogen. So, atmospheric fixation and deposition obviously, when the atmospheric nitrogen is mixed with some uh, water vapor and produces some uh, you know some nitric acid and ultimately, uh, ultimately deposits into the soil to form different in the form of acid drain that is also atmospheric fixation and deposition. Animal manures and biosolids also are organic forms of nitrogen they will come uh, after decomposition they will come to this organic nitrogen form and then further it will continue this way and uh, biological nitrogen fixation by legumes is another way through which they can fix uh, these leguminous crop basically fix atmospheric nitrogen to different organic forms. So, again this is a nitrogen cycle the blue uh, are the basically the input. So, you can see industrial fixation by producing by application of fertilizer plant residues biological nitrogen fixation animal manure and this atmospheric fixation and deposition are the inputs different types of lightning apex also helps in this atmospheric fixation and deposition and these you know red blocks are basically different types of uh, losses like leaching is a permanent leaching is a kind of loss, denitrification is a loss, 
to the atmosphere runoff and erosion is a loss obviously volatilization is further a loss and crop harvest so all these are lost and forms are given in this uh, green uh, you know oval shape uh, oval shape forms. So, you can see atmospheric nitrogen is one of the form and then ammonium, nitrate and organic nitrogen uh, the other forms. So, basically this is a snapshot of nitrogen cycle, nitrogen cycle is more complex. However, you can get a basic idea about the different processes which are going on uh, in the soil nitrogen by just looking at this uh, cycle diagram. So, So, what are the different fates of uh, nitrogen in the soil? Obviously, this ammonium and uh, you know and nitrate they are uh, they are converted into different forms based on this for uh, this process. So, immobilization we have already told that immobilization is a conversion of ammonium uh, nitrogen to organic form of nitrogen. So, inorganic to organic form of nitrogen and ammonium also get you know uptaken by rice plant. So, it is a, 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 a you know it is a, a plant uptake is a fate. Obviously, Anamox we will discuss that later on. Volatilization is a conversion of ammonium to ammonia gas and then nitrification obviously conversion of ammonium to nitrate and fixation uh, several clay minerals also fix this ammonium ions we will discuss that later on. In case of nitrate obviously, this nitrate is immobilization because the conversion of uh, nitrate form to organic form is immobilization plant uptake plant uh, you know loves this form and uh, they uptake this nitrate anamox process we will discuss this later on denitrification is the conversion of nitrate to uh, atmospheric nitrogen uh, or gaseous nitrogen in the anaerobic condition dissimilated reduction is another way of uh, nitrate conversion and finally, leaching which is the removal of nitrate through uh, water downwards the soil profile. So, uh, these are basically given the snapshot of different fates of uh, these uh, two you know available forms of nitrogen and we will discuss them uh, one by one. So, let us start with the immobilization and mineralization. Now, mineralization and immobilization basically conversion of organic nitrogen form to inorganic forms and vice versa. So, when the organic forms of nitrogen converted to the inorganic forms of nitrogen, uh, then we call it the mineralization and the opposite process is called the uh, immobilization. And these two processes are basically mediated by various microorganisms which are present into the soil and uh, especially the bacteria and net nitrogen depends on carbon nitrogen ratio. So, let us see the conversion of different mineral uh, of different forms of nitrogen. So, R in H 2 basically denotes the organic forms of nitrogen or amino acids. So, you can see this R in H 2 further getting uh, you know uh, further uh, breaking down into ammonium and uh, then some alcohol and these uh, you know ammonium further oxidized to produce nitrite and this nitrite further oxidized to produce nitrate. Remember that is the conversion of ammonium to nitrite and then nitrite to nitrate is known as the nitrification process. So, this is the nitrification process we call it nitrification process and the conversion of organic form of nitrogen to inorganic forms of nitrogen is called the mineralization process and immobilization process is uh, the conversion of inorganic forms to organic forms. Remember that the C n ratio that is carbon to nitrogen ratio is very very important for maintaining these uh, or determining which will dominate, which process will dominate, whether the mineralization will dominate, whether the immobilization is dominant. Remember that generally the optimum C n ratio is considered 20 to 25 is to 1. So, when the C n ratio goes below 20, then immobilization uh, is, I am sorry, when the C n ratio goes below 20, mineralization is uh, predominant and when the C n ratio is way beyond 20 to 25, then we call it uh, when you will see that immobilization will dominate. So, why they dominate we will we, we, we'll discuss later on. So, importance of carbon nitrogen ratio. Now, let us see uh, 
what is the direct impact now this is cn ratio has direct impacts on residue decomposition and nitrogen cycling so optimum cn ratio for maintaining the biological activity of the microorganism is generally 20 is to 1 because all these conversion that is mineralization or immobilization or nitrification depends on microbial or microorganism activity. Now, basically the optimum nitrogen or uh, C and N ratio uh, for maintaining their activity is 20 to 25 is to 1. Sometime you will find it is 20, some in some books you will get it 25. So, either is fine. So, remember that these ratio, if there is a ratio of 20 is to 1, that means the 20 units of carbon per units of nitrogen. So, suppose there is a element, there is a there is a residue, plant residue, which has a C N ratio less than 20 is to 1, suppose 10 is to 1. So, that means there will be uh, mineralization. Why there will be mineralization? Because all the microorganisms will eat away these uh, carbon first, because carbon is present in lower quantity as compared to nitrogen uh, and then they will release the unused or excess nitrogen to get decomposed further. So, as a result there will be mineralization and when this ratio of to, you know C you know carbon nitrogen ratio is greater than for example, 80 is to 1 uh, we, which we find in case of straw rice straw for example. So, when we add this uh, this rice straw which have which is having higher uh, C n ratio the microorganisms uh, you know will immobilize the nitrogen in their body. So, uh, there will be conversion of ammonia, conversion of inorganic forms to organic forms. So, uh, again this optimum C n ratio is 20 to 25 is to 1, higher the ratio, longer the time for decomposition and vice versa and hence the higher C n ratio results in immobilization. So, if we want to uh, enhance the rate of decomposition, we must add some sub substance which is having lower C n ratio than 20 is to 1. Okay. So, ammonium fixation within the clay minerals you know that ammonium being a positive ion is also attracted, attra attracted to the clay surface because it generates the negative ions and uh, negative charge uh, in the clay surface. However, due to its size it is trapped on the non exchangeable sites and uh, you can see here. Uh, the silica layer is denoted by this and also this is aluminum hydroxy layer or that is silica tetrahedral layer, aluminum octahedral layer. So, these two silica tetrahedral layer and this is the one aluminum octahedral layer and uh, this uh, uh, fixed ammonium in elite. So, uh, due to the small due to the size it trapped in non exchangeable sites and ha it happens mainly in the twist to one type of clay as their ionic radii allows them to fit exactly in the space and a slow release reservoir is basically created with release rates slower than the rate of fixation and it basically affects the indigenous nitrogen uh, supplying capacity of the soil. So, you can see that uh, this fixed ammonium is basically at the interlayer space because the interlayer space is quite small. It is uh, if you remember in case of elite the interlayer space is dominated by potassium and it is basically collapsed. So, that is why elite is called the non expanding twist to one mineral and only the ammonium can fit in that small space because ammonium has uh, the, the similar ionic radii as that of potassium. So, you can see the ammonium can get fixed in the interlayer space also. So, what is ammonia volatilization? Well, when ammonia, when there is a high level of pH, then the, the pH, the high pH drives this reaction. For example, you can see here ammonia mine is reacting with the hydroxyl ion to produce the water and this ammonia which is escaping to the atmosphere. So, when there is a high pH into the soil, 
this drives this reaction to the right and ultimately it produces the ammonia which is further released to the atmosphere. So, this is called ammonia volatilization and volatilization results in losses of valuable nitrogen. So, this is one of the one, one of the loss of nitrogen and high temperature and less clay content also speed up the volatilization loss of nitrogen. So, how we can prevent the volatilization loss of nitrogen? We can apply fertilizer at certain depth rather than at the surface, so that it cannot direct came in you know come in contact with uh, these hydroxyls and also irrigating the field when fertilizer is applied to the surface. So, these are some ways through which we can uh, we can we can evade the volatilization ammonia volatilization process. And uh, this graph basically shows the relation between the ammonia uh, you know volatilization loss of ammonia and days after application and you can see as the and also it basically basically shows the effect of irrigation on ammonia volatilization. So, you can see when you give more and more irrigation obviously, the loss of ammonia uh, will be less as you can see here uh, the lowest ammonia released in case of this solid blue line because we are adding highest amount of irrigation water that is 21.6 millimeter of irrigation water. So, it basically shows the effect of irrigation on reducing the ammonium volatilization. So, it basically justify the, the solution which we discussed in our last slide. Now, also you can see here the effect of pH and temperature on ammonia volatilization. So, basically you see that when uh, with the with the x axis we are putting the days after urea applied to the soil surface which is a nitrogenous fertilizer and nitrogen volatilized in uh, as ammonia in the y axis. You can see as the temperature increases from 7 to 16 to 24 to 32 obviously, the nitrogen volatilization loss increases and here you can see uh, also with the uh, with the decrease in pH obviously, here it is 7.5 then 6.5 and 5.5. So, obviously, this higher pH condition that is alkaline condition basically favors um, the nitrogen volatilization or ammonia volatilization. However, the acidic condition lowers down the ammonia volatilization. So, guys uh, we have covered some basic process of uh, ammo, you know nitrogen uh, transformation and uh, we have discussed about uh, the nitrogen cycle and important process. And in the next lecture, we will try to finish this and we will try to cover all the other important nitrogen transformation processes like nitrification and then uh, denitrification, anamox and so on and so forth. And uh, thank you and uh, let us meet in our next lecture of uh, week 7.